Now, welcome to the session for Division H63 Project Incentive. My name is Aaron. I'm Division H Director for two districts. So feel free to actually come and support this one because we're going to do dissections for every single project out there in Pathways Education Program. Today's our focus now is icebreaker. Now, may I invite or show of hands, how many of you have done your icebreaker before? and highly recommend members to really show yourself, do icebreaker. Now, today we have quite a few guests who will be part of our roundtable discussion. It's actually also very nice to have them to talk about and share the experience too. But first of all, let's go directly to the facts. Now, let me just do a slight reminder. If you do not have the pathway matrix, I'm gonna send it one more time. So it will take a while. Let me just try to find it. Hmm. Or if members have it, please do share it. I'll just send the agenda poster again. Now for icebreaker itself, I'm going to share the project directly. Now, how many of you know, or before we even begin, how many of you know about the icebreaker and its objective? If you know the answer, please type in the chat box. This is a test for members who have done the icebreaker. We have some people saying I do. Yes, I would like to see that you do. <laughs> so you can actually type the, the objective. What, what, how long does it take for the icebreaker to, to, to finish or complete? And what sort of things that we have to bear in mind when we are doing our first speech, especially in pathways. Don't worry, uh, I will actually answer your questions alongside. So for members who have, well, four to six minutes, introduce yourself. Now, this is a very key element. So give a round of applause for Angela, give a round of applause for Erica for giving and contributing to the chat box for this project itself. So Icebreaker is the first foundation speech. Before that speech, I'm sure that many of you may be hesitant to even try the Icebreaker. The reason why is because you might be new to Toastmaster. You might be like, oh, I'm just starting my Toastmaster journey after I finish my traditional program, so I'm going to do an icebreaker. Everyone has a different views about icebreaker. Now, icebreaker itself, a few things to note before we even begin this project itself is that ask ourselves three simple questions. One, are you ready to take your first speech? Now, what do we mean by are you ready? Meaning that you are mentally prepared and you are physically prepared, okay? What do you mean by that? It means that some members, like if they are joined, they will have some vice president of education say, are you gonna do your speech? Next week, we can reserve your slot next week. Now, this is definitely not the way to go to encourage members to try the first speech. Now, the reason why is very simple. You need to be phys physically and mentally prepared to really try your first icebreaker speech. It takes a lot of courage. And remember, when the new member just joined, they are clueless, they're directionless. So my suggestion, before even beginning it, arrange a mentor for this member. It's very important. Have a mentor that really guides that person through. If that person doesn't have a mentor, at least the VP explains what sort of things to look. The pathway facts that we have just been through, 34, 34 projects in total. Now, we need to also explain about what are the things that we need to bear in mind, uh, applying for speech slots. Uh, how do you prepare your icebreaker speech? Is there any exercise or reference that you can guide? This is very important for every single mentor and every single VP out there. It's your job and responsibility to guide this new member through. As a member, for you, if you're a new member, please do not hesitate to ask, okay? 
the power in Toastmaster is the power to ask and try. Ask, meaning ask from your mentor and for your guidance, or ask from someone who have done it. That got to be someone who have done the icebreaker. Okay, seek for advice. Two, mentality adjustment. You are prepared for it. So what do you mean by that? You want to actually try to do some stimulation, maybe at home or talk with your friends and try out in for friends. Once you get a bit comfortable, then you go up the stage to try. It's not answering the request of members pushing you say, look, do your icebreaker speech next week or do your icebreaker speech two weeks later. The quality will not be that good. And you do not want your first try to be letting down on your own personal expectations. There are many members who have just recklessly tried icebreaker and left the club after doing that single speech. Maybe because they don't like how the evaluation works. Maybe because they have not prepared fully and they feel that they have let down on themselves. Or maybe because, and just because, they have high expectations on themselves. Okay? So this is one way whereby I highly recommend that new members, please, 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 do ask for advice. Do ask for experience. Now physically and mentally, that's one thing. Two, as mentioned before, read your manuals. Every manual in Toastmaster Pathways itself has videos, okay? If you do not have a video, there will be a YouTube video somewhere. Or there are exercises and checklists for you to do. Now, I highly recommend you to try it out. Don't worry whether you're failing it or not. There are exercises for you to do. Now, when you do it, you start to get a bit of a glimpse of what this project is helping you to grow into. Now, this is a second point. Really read your manuals and read, read, read. Okay. Now, third one that I will highly recommend for any new members or Toastmaster who are trying the icebreaker speech. Now, as Rosalind actually typed in the chat box, the purpose of this project for, is for any members to present a speech of any topic, receive a feedback. No, that is actually for speech, speech one for evaluation and feedback. That's not the icebreaker speech. It's four to six minute speech, first speech on any topic. Now, first four to six minutes speech on any topic. There will be, um, or rather saying there will be members who will be pointing out and say, look, the icebreaker is about introducing yourself. It's for you to icebreak to the audience. That's not necessarily the case. Okay, do not let members to decide where your direction would be like because your icebreaker can be doing any speech. The purpose of this project itself is for you to experience the stage, the, the feeling of going up the stage, and also letting you have a stimulation of what would it be like to talk in front of many people. Okay. That's the purpose of that icebreaker. It's not just doing the first four to six minutes to icebreak for people to know about you. No, it's for you to know more about yourself. That's actually the hidden meaning within it. Now, after doing the icebreaker itself, then you actually get to reach out there to talk with different people, let people know who you really are. Now, every icebreaker speech is not about self-introduction. I'm gonna do a demonstration as well. Now today, uh, I'm really fortunate to have Angela Lee, uh, who is a Toastmaster in District 89 and also a member in Victoria Toastmasters and also a, a very veteran Toastmaster for at least 20 years already, I think. Now, Angela Lee will be evaluating my speech. I'm going to do a demonstration for today. Now, I'm really honored to have her. The demonstration speech titled as The Moment. Now, if anyone like Sandy, if Sandy can exist, if you have green, yellow, and red card, if no, don't worry. If you have it, that will be helpful. You can actually do uh, timings for me. Timing for you for three, four, five, six? Yes, timing for me for four, five, six. Four, five, now, six. Yes, so green, yellow, and red. So now. now, I'm going to do a live demonstration about how my icebreaker speech will be like, okay? My icebreaker speech, four to six minutes, titled The Moment. Now, obviously, it depends on how you really respect the stage. That's a standard Toastmaster way of doing things. Aaron Leong, the moment, the moment, Aaron Leong. So I'll just do a handshake virtually, okay?
Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first speech in front of the crowd. Many of you may have seen my face. Many of you may have think about pinching my face into two, like what the all of us. But I want to let people know that finally, and finally, it's my moment for you to know about me. I come from a very humble background. I was born in Hong Kong, very nice little city whereby I would love to live my life out. But I was sent over to Singapore, to Australia, whereby I was staying there many, many times, many, many years. And I realized that my English is not the most proficient of all. I was there, staying in Hong Kong, staying in Singapore, staying in Australia, three different cultures. And I even lost my own sense of identity. But the moment arrived for me, the quest to really shine myself out to the world. I have a hidden agenda, a hidden agenda for you to know about me. I want to be an inspirational speaker. I want to reach out to the world whereby every speech impacts lives. You may think about everyone's stories are very juicy, interesting, but the one that left in our mind are the ones that change your life. I want to be that person. So I joined Toastmaster. Now, I've joined Toastmaster for quite some time. 13 years, I'm still a teenager. I'm really a teenager, as in, look at my youth, look at all my fat belly button that is not shown on the video webcam. But this is how I grow from a very skinny person to a very fat person. Now, for those of members who actually think about, hmm, are you really that skinny? Well, this is a good question. And I'm actually trying to find my Facebook that has all the evidence on there. But be warned, it's a secret. I've grown from a very skinny person to a fat person because I stand on the stage and didn't exercise. With COVID-19, we have even more of non-exercises other than moving our jaws which is a bit sad. That's why my belly grows every single day. So the first thing that you may want to know about me is that the moment for me to shine is I always get fatter and fatter despite whatever I have done. In one way, it's a good thing because I'm able to stand my ground. Important trait as an inspirational speaker. But the downside is I will not have girls because I'm getting fat. No one likes a fat person. Oh, maybe I'll take that back. Maybe there are people that will like fat person. But who knows? I cannot see it because I have a real life fact in front of me. Now in Toastmaster itself, I start to discover or find a moment whereby I want to shine out and shine far. Okay, far all the way across the globe. So I try to think about different ways of improving myself. Step two, all the things that you need to know about me, too. The hidden agenda to impact lives. I really want to do a lot of different things via the Toastmaster platform. What are they, you may ask? I've done a lot of different things. Things that are known to be crazy back in the days. For example, look at the online workshop that I'm doing right now. Look at the online meetings that you are going and visiting different clubs these days. I thought about that nine years ago. And people think and reply me with one sentence. You are crazy. Because Toastmaster they didn't welcome that at that time. So I thought about why not do something different. Connect the world with stories. Now connecting to the world with stories that actually happens with me deep down that I want to help people, right? So what I did are as follows. I helped to charter a prison club. Prisoners who are rehabilitated and finding them with jobs with good public speaking skills. The meaningful impact that will help to impact lives. 
I also done a lot of different, like for example, YLP programs, youth leadership programs to help schools, students to be great potential leaders in the community. I also done a lot of different things in hospitals, whereby I talk with cancer patients, terminal disease patients, and give them a glimpse of hope that their stories also impact lives. So by doing a lot of different things within this voluntary organization, I find the moment to shine is to do more things for the good. Now, this is the second thing that you might want to know about me. And the final thing that you might want to think about in any Toastmaster journey is that what makes your journey so special. Now, the moment for me in Toastmaster is that I have, for some of members who definitely know about me, I've run for a leadership position in District 89 for three years. Five times for division director, lost all of them. I lost all of them. I always try to reflect how I can improve myself. But I realized that every failure is the moment to succeed next time. So the third thing that you may want to think about knowing me is that I am someone that is stubborn and also persevere to the end of time. Because stubbornness and standing up to what you truly believe in is what where my moment stands out to last forever. This is also a trait that I always want to help others to think about. If you have an idea, if you believe yours can help to change the world, yours to inspire the world, go for it. This is your moment to shine. Now, may I, for the fellow audience, I'm sure you have your own moments. Now, what is your most glamorous moment that you want to share to us in your next speech? I'm looking forward to listening to more of your speeches, but this is mine. What's yours? Okay, full stop, and then cut, and then pass the stage, and then I just did a demonstration. So now you will see that some members, especially seasoned members, actually make a tiny mistake in doing icebreaker. And what's the tiny mistake, you may ask? Over time. Why? Because in any Toastmasters, when you have been here for a long time, what is the common issue that you're thinking about? Oh, well, iceberg is four to six minutes. You're used to five to seven minutes, right? So you'll get stuck in that loop. And then when you do an icebreaker speech, then you may actually forget about the time. So maybe my evaluator will be telling me, oh, please keep track of your time. Okay, so one thing that you might want to think about preparation as well for doing the icebreaker speech, especially it's not, not on your time, sorry, it, it got lagged out. So time delay, right, time lapse. Now two, I think in any icebreaker speech yourself, after you do your speech as a member, try to note one thing, do a checklist. What could you have done better if you have to do it the second time? Okay, you may do an icebreaker once, but if you are pushed to a stage again and said, Look, you've done your icebreaker, please do it again. Do a new one. What could you have done better? Write it on a piece of paper and help yourself improve. Number three, you need to note for any icebreaker speeches, after doing your speech, talk with your evaluator. Okay, talk with your evaluator because they will know about some stuff to help you possibly improve yourself. Now, once you build this system, hope it will last not just this project but the future projects ahead the 63 different projects do it in the same style always ask yourself what could you have done better next time what are your strengths this time talk with your evaluator what can be done is there any directions or guidance you can show me and finally write down the items after you list out all your items yourself you can also ask others for feedbacks there's no right or wrong answers. It's only for yourself. You know what stands out. Now, there are some members who will always ask one question and say that, oh, there are evaluators that give me a lot of different feedbacks. One, and then my friends tell me the second one, and then many people are telling you the third one. Now, you receive a lot of different evaluations. That usually happens when you have contests. But for Icebreaker, you will see a lot of nice, kind souls in Toastmaster say, well, that's a very great speech, and then give you some guidance, right? Now, guidance A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, a lot. Now, recommendations for new members. You can listen to all of them. 
Now, I would highly suggest you to actually have a piece of paper. Again, why? Note the common trend among all these people who give you feedbacks, the top three recommendations. Once you see the similarities, that may be a start for you to improve on the skill competencies. Okay, this is one tip that I would like to share with everyone. Now, Angela, are you ready? Hi, Angela. Yes, 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 yes. Let me know when you're ready to, to evaluate me. Uh, usually the evaluator is the boss. We were just like, uh, I'm looking forward to you evaluating me, Angela. Please evaluate me. Good evening, fellow members. Just a moment. Uh, can you hear me? Right. Yes, just we can. I will spotlight you. Yeah, just a moment. Just a moment. Not very clearly. Maybe you too close to the speaker audio in. Uh, good evening, fellow members, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored and privileged to evaluate uh, Aaron's speech. Actually, as we all know that Aaron is a very confident, ambitious, and also a humorous speaker. I think all of you can agree with me. As an icebreaker, I usually listen to the speaker who is, you know, has something special and unique to say. And Aaron didn't disappoint me because he uh, shared with us three important points. It was an opening and told us that he's the Division H uh, director. And also, uh, we, can, we can know that uh, he is a, a inspirational speaker. This is his hidden agenda, which is very good so that we can have online meeting very efficiently in recent years because of his hard work during the last nine years. And also a very humorous speaker because he said no girls would like uh, him because he's from skinny person to a, a little bit fat person. I think outward appearance doesn't matter. I think most girls look the past of a person. So forget about your appearance, Aaron. I'm sure a lot of girls will like you, uh, will like you. And also, um, you share with us your failures as well. This is very difficult for a division director because everyone would like to share his uh, successful stories. And Aaron told us that he failed three times for a election of a division uh, director. I think this is also very good. Mm, what I would like to suggest to Aaron is that please speak slowly. I think your English, your good command of English make you speak very fast. As the icebreaker, I thought it is uh, better for you to speak slowly so that we can absorb all the message that you would like to share with us. And also you have a good vocal variety. When you're talking about the COVID-19, you really raise your voice you know, to an extent that you're really passionate about sharing this point. I think as a rice, uh, ice speaker, your content is a little bit too rich and too much. That's the reason why you uh, spoke over time. And I hope that Aaron, if you really want to be an excellent speaker, I think uh, you have to speak slowly and enjoy the stage to share with the audience. Because you are too familiar with your subject, then you will, people will uh, feel that you are just speaking, you know, uh, to impress the audience, but not really want uh, to share your real uniqueness to us. Maybe this is my own opinion. But as long as you share with this uh, story with us, uh, your eye speaking, i really looking forward that you could improve your speaking speed, the rate, and also the pauses, and also your vocal writing to to speak about the three points. 
So this is my sharing. Thank you. Give a round of applause to Angela for a very nice, uh, it's a very quick evaluation. Usually evaluates this would take some time to actually digest what you said and also uh, doing a very nice detailed overall analysis for you. Now in this situation wise, um, re remember what Angela have just mentioned, the points that she has just mentioned. Now why do I say or highlight this element in play? Now, this is actually very related to our Pathways project itself. Our icebreaker, if you look at the icebreaker menu itself, this is the icebreaker menu. Feel free to download it from the base camp. I'm just doing a very quick example of what the points she have highlighted. Now, remember that she mentioned a point about interesting topics, opening, body, and conclusion. Now, when you actually read this menu itself, it actually helps you to guide it through all the elements in play of how you can start by doing so, like introducing yourself, also share information that you would like people to know about you. Now, it's not just that because you will see that there will be a video here. Now, if you go to the Pathways Base Camp itself, that is a video that actually guides you to how you do your icebreaker. But in a printed format, you cannot see the video, but it still makes sense. All right, let's go down, scroll down a bit more. It also tells you about how you can prepare, write it down, remember your outline and connect with the audience. Look at the techniques that I've just used to try to connect with the audience with humor, with elements in play that may actually raise your attention. And obviously there are some things that we had tried. Remember the part about rehearsals? Now Icebreaker actually highlights this elements in play. Remember the part where by Icebreaker, do not rush an Icebreaker. Let people be physically and mentally prepared. So they will actually ask you to rehearse with friends, record yourself, use a mirror, time yourself. These are the things that Icebreaker already tell you the foundations of what you need to do before you even start your Icebreaker speech. Now let's look it down more about the part whereby I think this is the highlight of the day. Really enjoy the moment of pacing. Now, what Angela mentioned before just now about me rushing, and this is a very good point, I forgot to relax and breathe, maybe. Now, she reminds me of that. Now, it also tells me to actually look back into this menu and look about the shining points that I can improve next time. Some people may actually do readings about the menus before they start the speech, but many people forget about reading the menu again after the speech because they already done it. They're not gonna look at it again. But I highly recommend this is the way that I usually do and it works out really well because you're able to reflect the points that your evaluator has highlighted to you. Now, not just that, we also can see some other things like after your speech, we listen to your evaluator, be courteous and be open to feedback. Now, if you don't be open to feedback, you're not able to improve yourself. One important element, the mentality wise, learn to receive, learn to get, then you're able to share. Now, many people of like, for example, like season Toastmasters like me, may have a side thought that we think that we might be the best. Yes, because of many years of experience, we may have that. But think about it. There's always someone that's better than you. You cannot keep on improving if you think about your methods are the best. Now, icebreaker is just a very simple topic, but it has a lot of different elements or life lessons for us to learn from. Highly recommend to have a look at it. There's so many gold, golden nuggets in it. Now, we have finished the demonstration part. We have finished the evaluation part. Now, finally, we have the last part, which is the Pathways Roundtable. Today, we are honored to have Jenny, uh, Miss Jenny Lim, uh, which is from District 80 and also the current area director as well, who will be also part of our panelists. We also welcome Sandy and Angela to be part of it. And every one of you can share your experience of doing pathways because I actually seen most of you here, most of you that I know in this group have done your level one project icebreaker. Now it's a time whereby we can make some difference of sharing the best tips of how each new member can do for the icebreaker itself. We have Jenny, we have Angela, we have Sandy, we have Martin, we even have Phoenix, Eric, Erica, Hilda, 
all can be part of this panelist panel. So we have a very big one. So now it's your time, your moment to shine, not me, okay? So welcome to the Pathways Roundtable, whereby you will, will listen to very honest stories, genuine stories, maybe bad, but will be good for you. Now, first of all, I would like to ask and throw the ball to question to Jenny. I would like to throw the ball to Jenny first. Now, Jenny, I know that you have quite a lot of stories about doing, you finished two paths, but aiming to finish two paths. Now you're doing, you have done at least two icebreakers. Can you share the, the preparations uh, that you prepared for the first icebreaker and the second icebreaker and compare the difference for us, Jenny? Okay, so I think when I joined Toastmasters, I actually disappeared for six months. So I took a break and then I came back. Then I had to do my icebreaker at the, well, in a way, pressure because I came back. I, mean, I, I was in the ex school. So I have to show to be a role model. That's kind of pressurized to do my icebreaker. And that's why I was in Toastmasters. I have to start somewhere. So I was a very bad example. I had a mentor, but I've never asked help for my mentor. Because I'm a salesperson uh, because of my profession. So I thought it would be very easy for me to just speak anything under the sky. But it was a big mistake because I've never actually looked at the manual properly. Okay, I've, I'm a very lazy student or Toastmasters. Whatever is on the website, I don't read, I don't, you know, I go by hearing. I, and I just, oh, okay, icebreaker, we do that every time in any business meeting. What's, what's so difficult about it? So I've never really looked at it until about a few hours before the meeting. So I was, I was like panic. Oh my goodness. Um, I've, suddenly I got fear. So I kind of put away my sales meeting. I put away my phone. I sat down. But I was still panicked because I have no idea how to write a speech. So writing a speech was the biggest challenge for me. So I text my VPE. My VPE sent me a string of questions over WhatsApp. I said, okay, just follow anything. Just pick one of this. Just talk about something. Pick out of that. So thanks to his help, he gave me those questions. Uh, and I kind of, within like less than an hour or so, I tried to write, okay? And that was very difficult. Uh, eventually, I did it. But I realized that what the feedback was, it's not my life story. So I, I was like relating from my birth, family, dun, 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 all the way. And that's my biggest mistake. So I know icebreaker is not about your life story, which a lot of people does make the same mistake. Uh, of course, in my second round, when I did my second icebreaker, I, of course, I've gone through it. I have kind of picked the juices or the gems which they highlight to, to me that I should focus. So my evaluator or the, okay, you're right. My evaluators were not just my designated evaluators. I was very blessed because um, I had some DTMs in the meeting and he's very kind. He, he bring me to my side and then say, okay, let me tell you things and that. And that's how we became uh, my mini, uh, well, I would call him my invisible mentor. So I think uh, let's not be afraid if you're doing icebreaker, we should always encourage our members to be open. Uh, I was open because thanks to them being so open to me. So if now you are a seasoned Toastmasters, be daring enough to go and tell and share your expressions of um, whether is it positive or negative, because every one of you in a meeting who is able to give a feedback will really help that person, especially for icebreaker. Uh, I've also journeyed with some of my new members and I love the fact that some of them, because they had a companion, there were a few of them doing together. So it was a little bit of competition. I was alone that time. I was the only new member who was doing it. So I, was, I felt a bit lonely. Uh, but I, later on, my new members, they had pairs of people and that helps them to have that kind of companionship and encouragement. And when I tried to talk to them, they were also much more easier to encourage them to do it together. Uh, so for me is my always, we would, I think mentor is very important and mentor has to do the part. If you are assigned a mentee, a coachee, please do the part of follow up with your mentee because if you don't follow up just like me, I was left alone. And in a way, I think 
somehow or rather we had this mutual understanding that we are adults or we don't, you will come to me when you need help. But I think we have to recognize the fact that some adults, okay, may not wish to go to the mentor. If the mentor doesn't open the door, okay, come, let's talk. Yeah, but I think it's a skill to be, not to be pushy because they will feel pressurized. Like what I say, they must be ready. Um, I think for people, who, I have also had icebreaker speech was like 10, 15 minutes. And why it, she took so long, partially in a way, our fault, our members' fault, we forgot to tell her the time. that, And she didn't read. I said, it's okay, just talk about yourself. And she really overran the time. But we all of us love her icebreaker speech. It was really her true story. So uh, this is some of the things I've learned. I'm not I always tell a lot of people, I'm not a very good example of a brand new Toastmasters when I was there because I have very lack in preparation. So after my first round, because it was such a challenge to write, uh, when I do subsequent speech, I, I, I really put myself, you know, force myself to write. And it took me a while to overcome this writing challenge. Uh, now, I write, but not in the way I thought that everyone has its own style. I'm not a, a comprehension kind of a speech person. I'm a point form person. So I've also learned this through my various visits to clubs, watching how people do it, talking to people. And I think that's my journey in Toastmasters. I'm still learning, you know, so I go a lot of online clubs to visit different countries because I feel that um, it's always good to expose. And I think over the months I went to some clubs, they've also exposed me to new ways and I bring it back to my own clubs as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for sharing her wonderful experience about uh, her pathways journey a bit more uh, and also some encounters that she had for icebreaker speech. Now, the next person I would like to invite up the stage that may actually want to share a bit of her experience is Sandy. Now, I would like to invite Sandy up the stage. The reason why it's very simple uh, is because Sandy actually is still doing her level one speeches. Now, she has been through her level one speeches and is in a very perfect shape to share her experience when she first started her icebreaker speech. Now, Sandy, would you like to share about your preparations for your icebreaker speech and how, that, how did it go? Okay. Um... The time for me to prepare my icebreaker was uh, like through one week, but actually I prepared it for like two nights or three nights. Um, my personal my personal habit would be to write down the outline, and then I will write down the outline. I would uh, talk. I will use the talk, and I will use the talk as uh, so the smartphone. So I will use the structure first, and then I will talk and record it. And then as I record it, I will listen, and I will modify my structure or modify my description. So for me, when I was preparing for my icebreaker, it was actually the night before I modify all the things within like three hours. So for me, it would be like what I was trying to say and compare with my original outline was be quite a bit different. So, uh, for me, it would be like kind of rush, and also I made the same mistake like Aaron did uh, around kind of over time because I was not quite used to four to uh, seven minutes. So what I was preparing was like a seven minutes long speech. So for me, time requirement I didn't I fulfill I fail for that part. But the structure or storytelling, I still have the basic uh, requirement to meet that part. See, thank you very much, Sandy. Now we have learned, or uh, we have heard from two stories of how they actually prepared the icebreaker. So now, uh, can I actually see other people who have actually switched on the webcams? Because I might be picking on you as well. Uh, now uh, I've seen Erica as well. Now Erica uh, is uh, is my very important comrade in uh, District One One Eight as well, and she's our uh, division PR. Now Erica has done her icebreaker in pathways. Would you like to share your experience with the uh, icebreaker and the benefits of it, though? Uh, okay, I think I, sorry, I think I did my icebreaker maybe more than a year ago uh, in Pathways. 
and it wasn't easy. Um, it was ne never easy for me to talk about, about myself. So, so, and uh, after hearing so many uh, other icebreakers or um, or self introductions, well, not not necessarily self introductions, but most people make it that way. Um, after hearing all of that, it's a little hard for you to to pick which exact aspect uh, of your life you want to introduce to your club so um so it took me a long time to to prepare this uh, to prepare the speech and uh, and um well in the end uh, or as i uh, a habit that i developed uh, later is that uh, when you don't know or you're not sure or you have too many things to talk about uh, pick the one that interests you the most, that you want to explore or you want to develop the most, that would give you a, a passion or a, or fun uh, while while you're preparing. And uh, I I uh, like honestly I don't remember much about my my last icebreaker, and. Uh, but uh, well, to me, like it's almost like every speech is kind of an icebreaker because I I try to I try to make new messages or address new audiences uh, every time I can. So, um, so if you're doing your icebreaker or if you want to uh, do it again, uh, that's that's what I um, that's what I would recommend. Uh, try try uh, something challenging. Try something different because that's the thing that uh, always always can push you. That that always uh, that you always get motivated from. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Erica. I think Erica actually mentioned a very great point just now. That any speech is an icebreaker speech. Now, the reason why I have to put the point as icebreaker speech is because that you do every speech a brand new one. It's a brand new impression that you're leaving for your audience. There may be audience who know about you. There may be audience that are new and just get to know about your speech. Not every day is like a new impression. So the mentality is good. Try to think about your speech in a way that every day or every speech is a new beginning. Now, I would like to ask the next person, which is, I would say she has seen me growing up from young. <laughs> I always said that she's she's like uh, my half mom in Toastmaster. Uh, I would like to invite Angela up to stage to share her experience because in Pathway itself, we have actually heard about different preparation stuff and stories. Now I'd like to hear from the evaluation side. Now you have been an evaluator for me just now. What are the things that you will watch out for for icebreaker evaluation that you want to help the members, what are the things to watch out for by being an evaluator for this speech? Yeah, first of all, I would like to uh, talk about the structure, the basic structure, that's the opening body and conclusion. That's the most important thing. And the next thing that I will look for is the message. What message uh, the speaker is going to share with us? And this is the most important. Then if I have time, I will also listen to the um, vocal variety, and uh, also the use of language and also the body language or whatever. I think the most important point for an icebreaker is to speak simply, you know, just maybe uh, three points which you would especially like to share with the audience and also uh, give them uh, encouragement to speak uh, an icebreaker, which is very easy uh, to do. For me, I think uh, maybe 20 years ago when I was making my icebreaker, I usually write the whole speech. I think I, 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 I'm a little bit different from the previous two speakers. I write the whole speech and I will stick to about five, uh, five minutes, uh, 30 seconds. Then I will uh, record the time because at that time I was very nervous and very scared. So I will listen to my speech. But at that time, my tone is very flat. And, you know, my individual evaluators say I'm a very monotonous speaker. So my voice is just like a uh, deaf person, the pulse of a deaf person. Very stable, very uh, 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 not very clear. 
So um, I think as icebreaker, the most important thing for you to do is to speak something about you, your likes, your dislikes, your educational background. You know, for uh, of course you are. Uh, as Ellen said, you are not introducing yourself, but when you are introducing yourself, because there are many icebreakers. So for the first icebreaker, I think it's better for us to share your name, your, you know, why you come to the Toastmaster, your education, your likes and dislikes, and simple points, you know, make it short, make it conversational English. I think this is very important. So when I listen to the icebreaker, I usually know, oh, this person, whether he's introvert, extrovert, or he's outspoken, or he's uh, a very sign person, or what his hobbies are, so that I can break the ice after the speech, uh, after the meeting, so that I can have conversation with the speaker to connect with him so that we can make friends. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Really Im impressive. Uh, one point that I would like to add on to Angela's uh, highlight about evaluation itself is that when you are evaluating an icebreaker, don't be harsh. Okay? You want to give them a really nice kickoff, but don't be, uh, we, we call that, is it hypocrite? Uh, don't be too exaggerating. Like, you know, in Toastmaster, we usually have two extremes. The one side is like, Oh, you do a really good job. Amazing. I love for your speech. It's so amazing. Go on and stuff. That's so fake. And then we have another site whereby it's like, oh, your speech is like, oh, there's so many. One, two, three, four, five. I feel so demoralized. So you are, as an evaluator, it helps you to find the perfect balance in between. Now, you want to be as true as possible, but in a positive way. So a word of encouragement for all evaluators, please be encouraging, but not exaggerating. Be real, authentic, because it's their first day in Toastmaster as a Toastmaster baby. Would you like to throw the baby on the floor and say, you are, why are you crying? Don't be like that. Try to think about some ways that you also had your first speech. You were once a Toastmaster baby. You only joined for like one to two weeks, for example. Would you like to have someone that treats you the same when you actually do the evaluation for them? So evaluation-wise is also one of the critical points when you're evaluating this speech. So we have heard about stories. We have heard about some sort of preparation work for evaluation. Now, the last one I want to hear from is actually from Phoenix. Phoenix, are you here? Now, Phoenix is like a encyclopedia or a professor at Pathways itself. He helps to analyze all the wordings within, within this project. Uh, would you like to say something about it, Phoenix? I think he's busy. Hi, Phoenix. How are you there? Uh, he may be lagged out. Don't worry. No. Okay, then I will let him be. <laughs> Now, uh, I would like to highlight one more point. Uh, so now for Icebreaker itself, really go with any innovative points in there. Actually, I want to ask one more person. There are two presents in this group right here. Uh, that's Rosalind and Alan. Uh, Rosalind and Alan, would you like to share your thoughts when you do your first Icebreaker? Rosalind, Alan, are you there? Sorry, I'm in another meeting. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I know, I know you're busy at other meetings, so don't worry. Sorry. Or anyone else who wants to share their experience? You, because this video that you are in right now is helping the globe later on when we are actually publicizing to YouTube. So definitely look forward to many different tips and advice for sharings. Martin, would you like to share something? Okay. When I do my icebreaker, I try to make it relatable to the audience. For, for example, with you in Asia, it's better to speak about the dragonflies instead of Latin countries that we speak about eagles. And if you focus in the words that they use, I think that you catch more the, the, the audience and you are more relatable to them. Not that I will just do everything specific for them, but I try, for example, if it's one audience about India, then, oh, I went to a Diwali celebration, I did this, I ate 
all these things and all that. So they are going to be more confident or they are going to understand better because they are used to that. And I think that is, they have told me that it's a good way to catch their attention. I don't know if that's true, because, but I try to do my best and to share, as you say, the juicy stories. But that juicy stories must be according to the oranges or the fruit that you have in your own country. Because if I call uh, or if I speak about pitayas, pitayas is like a, a fruit from a cactus, you are not going to know about that. But if you say it about kiwi or apples, oranges, then it's going to be more relatable to your audience. I think that that it would be a good point to focus in when we do our icebreakers also. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. We have heard all the way from Spain about different, you know, sometimes it really helps to have different insights from different countries around the world. Uh, it actually gives you a nice stimulative ideas. Um, I would like to share a personal story. Uh, as you know, I have done 11 Pathways Icebreaker. So what's so special about 11 ice, uh, Pathway Icebreaker is that I do every single icebreaker differently. Now, how do I do it differently? You know that every path has its own uh, unique theme, like dynamic leadership, presentation mastery, engaging humor. I will usually like to set a direction for it. What is the one thing that I haven't done in my icebreaker that I would like to share? Now, this is one element in play that is really, really important, though, because if you actually think about it, you set a direction for your icebreaker speech, it gives a nice kick. It's like you know there is an end when you begin, rather than just pointlessly going to a direction that you have no end. So, for, for example, my presentation, I, I Mastery, I focus on uh, an icebreaker that shows my expertise as a champion speaker. So I think from this perspective. Now I did in an engaging humor way, uh, whereby the, the path that I'm doing in an engaging humor way for icebreaker is that I need to think about icebreaker that is merging cold humor, which is you have to digest what I said first before you laugh, and then warm humor into my speech of icebreaker. Now I also do it in dynamic leadership whereby I did it in terms of a leadership context whereby you get to understand me from my work basis, uh, my personal life. Uh, you get to understand me from uh, a different perspective of my own life ambition, my stories of my lifetime, my past. So 11 different speeches, there are 11 different possibilities. So don't undermine your icebreaker because your icebreaker is a speech to be remembered. Okay, now I'm just sharing this self ideas because there are some members who say, oh, you've done one icebreaker. So icebreaker for pathways one, that's all. You don't need to do 11 times. No, that's wrong. There are some members who actually do the second situation whereby they do one same speech for icebreaker throughout 11. And that's also a wrong concept because you ask yourself one question. Are you here to overcome this hurdle? or are you here to challenge yourself on the different limits? Are you wasting your time or are you really helping yourself? Okay, this is very important because icebreaker can be different. Like think about from an audience perspective, I want to get to know more about you. This is your first speech. Oh, there is a handsome guy in the, in the crowd. I haven't gotten to talk to him at all. Now I get to hear his icebreaker. Now my expectation and my concentration is on his first speech. No matter whether it's a good one or bad one, don't worry as a speaker. It's only just a connection that I get to know more about you. Now think about it, you talk to a random stranger or some random stranger talk to you or maybe your best, your friends, just a normal friend. Oh, your classmate just say, hey, uh, my name is Aaron, what's yours? Think about it from a conversational perspective. The icebreaker is like a first 15 seconds of establishing a connection with the audience. Once you establish that connection, then sharing your story will be of an easy feat. Okay, so I leave the last bit for any other questions or sharings before I wrap up the entire situation because we went way over time. Yes. Alan, Hilda, would you like to share something? 
or they are busy. If not, uh, if there's no more questions, uh, now my turn to ask you questions, okay? Uh, usually we have something called the pathways roundtable. It couldn't be finishing well if you do not have, uh, I don't have money though, but I'm just saying that you do not have some quiz to ask you. Now, first things first, how long is the icebreaker speech? Very basic question. Four, four to six. Four to six minutes. Okay, so secondly, what are the few things you need to watch out for, like in your icebreaker speech? What are the few things? Just name a couple. There's no right or wrong answers. Mm -hmm. sure. Audience interest, keep that interest, keep that engaged. Basic mm -hmm. structure. Read but the manuals. Basic. Uh, uh, okay. Also, eye contact, body language, vocal variety, uh, get audience involved. Interested? Hmm. You already went to level three. <laughs> Usually that's, those are level three stuff. Uh, but uh, one, one key thing I think is really important to know is that you have to be physically prepared and mentally prepared. Very important element in play. If you're not mentally prepared, you went up, you will get a very bad experience. If you're not physically prepared, you mentally prepared went up the stage, you will blame yourself that you're not doing well. Okay, so this is one important thing for any icebreaker. Now, third thing I would like to ask about icebreaker speech is that is it icebreaker, is it the same for every single path? Is it the same component every single path? No. What is this? Yeah. Yes, it's the same for every single path, but you can do a different icebreaker speech, okay? Yeah. That is very important to know about this, very key fact. Now, four is that this is a question on a personal level. How long do you usually prepare for icebreaker? Is it one minute, one hour, one day, <laughs> one week, or one month? Two hours, two to three hours, yeah. Are you kidding me about two to three <laughs> hours? <laughs> How long? Two to three hours practice that have been mine for like two to three days. So actual practice like two to three hours. Hmm, okay. So any you other answers? For seasoned Toastmasters, those who have regularly been speaking or who are very, because I just had a, a Toastmasters who was a seasoned speaker, she just did icebreaker. Uh, in a way, she didn't really prepare, okay? Because somehow or other, it's been part of her, her career that she, she speaks a lot and she shares a lot. So she just need to pick something that she wanted to share during the icebreaker. So it all depends on the individual. So if you have always been talking about a topic within that four minutes to six minutes, it will probably come to you very easy. But if you have stopped speaking and then you have to restart your engine, even for a seasoned Toastmasters, uh, they might feel challenged because that's what I'm doing now. I'm feeling a challenge because I have not spoken for a long time. Yeah. Mm. So very good point by Jenny. Uh two to three days are actually generally for seasoned Toastmasters. For new Toastmasters, I highly recommend do not do it last minute like me. But sometimes I, I'm usually quite last minute too. But it's like, uh, for example, I can do a workshop with just one minute preparation. I can speak for six hours. I can still do that. But the thing is that you need practice, okay? So for new Toastmasters, I highly suggest the recommended time for preparing an icebreaker speech is usually around one week. Okay, the reason why is very simple. Let me break it down why one week is recommended. First things first, you need to talk with your mentor, right? If you have a mentor or VP, ask them. They will be taking around like uh, one day or so, one to two days, and then they have to get back to you and stuff, answer your questions and stuff like that. Now, the next thing after you get some guidance is to do rehearsals and try it, right? You need to read your manuals. That will also take one day or two. Now, already around like two to three days is gone. Now, remaining four days is what about rehearsals? Now, because you need to get physically prepared, you may want to do rehearsals. So you need to get your mental stage ready. So a couple of days of preparations will be very important for you too when you first begin your icebreaker speech. So that will take around like three days. And then you might be feeling very nervous on the day before the actual Toastmaster meeting because you have put in a lot of efforts. You'll get a bit nervous. So you want to do one last try of your video and then send it maybe to your, uh, to your mentor for guidance. Because the, mo the amount of time that you spend on something, it will be reflected in the entire outcome. 
So that will take around one week or so. Don't rush, take it at your own pace because everyone's learning speed and experience have their own style. Like I can do a speech, as I mentioned, I just need one minute of preparation. I can speak for six hours nonstop. Provided that it's a bottle of water beside me because I will have sore throat. But the thing is for other preparations, especially for new members, don't try this at home. Uh, it's not good for kids to really get preparations for one week. Uh, that will be highly recommended. Now for, for some people who have stage frights, yes, there are situations which have stage frights. I know about a member that actually spent seven months just to prepare, okay? Just to prepare for the icebreaker. Seven months just to get mentally prepared. Now, the reason why is because everyone may have a phobia in their lives. Do not push them because I just recommended one week. It's not because that is the standard answer. Now, everyone has their own stories. Like, for example, I spent seven years, okay? I spent seven years to get out of uh, something that's not relevant, get out of a past relationship, okay? I spent seven years. Now, some people may have stage phobias because of the experience that has been haunted in the past. Now, we have to think about that experience in a consideration. So all we need to do as a guide or a seasoned member to help this member is to let them have ample time and guide them through to make their first speech. Don't rush, guide. Don't push, slowly nurture, okay? So I'm just taking a, a bit of pauses there. So in short, that's the, uh, the nutshell in a gist. Thank you for staying behind for one hour. Uh, icebreaker talk, I was expecting around like 30 minutes and then it turned out to be one hour. Really appreciate everyone's time. And, and let's, I hope everyone can actually give one sentence at the end, at the end of this workshop. I want everyone to give one sentence of positivity to encourage people to try icebreaker. Now, may I start with the most seasoned Toastmaster of everyone here, Angela, to start off. <laughs> okay, that's why I would say most seasoned, right? Yeah. Uh, positivity, just one sentence uh, of encouraging members to try icebreaker. I think usually to start a new thing is very difficult. But I think in our, like, in, our, in our life, we have to try something new so that we can grow and glow. So I encourage every one of you to do your icebreaker as soon as possible when you are mentally and physically ready. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. So we have one amazing seasoned Toastmaster. So I want to invite someone that is also seasoned Toastmaster as well. I would like to invite Martin to actually share some positivity and uh, to, to encourage members to really try about Pathways Icebreaker. Ben, I am a seasoned Toastmaster and that's true because many of you were not born when I, wa when I did my first Icebreaker. That was 24 years ago in Winnipeg. Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada, and I returned until last year. So last year I did my second icebreaker. And since then I have done maybe around 10 icebreakers in different countries and always have been different, always with something different to share. And people like that. And I think that you, you just must have the confidence to speak and all are going to, to be helpful or willing to know more about you. And you are going to make many friends worldwide. So let's begin speaking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite someone that has been hiding themselves behind the screen and finally opening up the webcam. So let, let me invite Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, hi, Ryan. Uh, would you like to give us a little bit uh, positivity to encourage members to try icebreaker. <laughs> yes, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yep. Okay. Mm. I think uh, for the icebreakers, you don't need to be perfect to start. You just start to do the icebreaker and uh, get on the way on the journey to be perfect. I think you can start your icebreaker first, then to be perfect. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Ryan. Really great job. Good round of applause. Now, next, I would like to invite Alan, uh, our island president, right? So you, you are in charge of leading so many members to try pathways. Because uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Ireland is actually part of uh, Division H in District 89. So Ireland has been doing his very best to encourage members to try pathways, especially during the icebreaker, right? So what is your sentence to encourage our, our members to try pathways? Oh, uh, doing <clears throat> icebreaker is very good and then we have to do it all together and then whenever you go into a new icebreaking uh, journey and then you find a new way of your life. Mm. Thank you very much, Alan, for sharing. Finding a very new way in your life, uh, finding new ways of doing speeches. Now, Erica, would you like to say something or Sandy? Uh, Eric Kofus. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So no matter you are a new Toastmaster or or a very experienced one already, um, while hearing all your speeches, I'm already very eager to do my next icebreaker because uh, well, since I haven't done one for for more than a year, and it's uh, it's something I secretly dread for. So and now I can't wait to do my next. And uh, even if you're a very experienced Toastmaster, you can still find a strange audience to to make a how, how do you call it a blind or strange introduction of yourself. And you can go to a different club. You can go to a new club and um, try to introduce them them to your uh, yourself to them, like and uh, try to introduce yourself in every different way. Like it's just, just take it as a test. And um, after the test, uh, you, you ask for the feedbacks like, like you're an engineer or a software or something, programmer or something. Uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's very funny. So first of all, it's very funny, treat it as a game. And um, like you don't lose anything, do you? Mm, so highly recommend uh, all of you, highly recommend everyone in the world. I hope everyone in the world can can make a colorful set, uh, like icebreakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Erica. Now, uh, Sandy, would you like to say something as well? Uh, the sentence actually is for you. Um, try, uh, try your flight. And I think trust two people for the icebreaker. One is um, ask for your mentor for help. And the other would be trust your evaluator. Because whatever you have done for your icebreaker, you always can modify it in the future, move on to this second speech. So stand on the stage. Uh, if you screw up, uh, you won't really kill yourself. You just move on to the next. So learn from the mistake and things will be fine. That's what I have learned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, now for me, uh, all I want to say is that I have my Olive as a friend, but before I really get to know him as a friend, I want to show a lasting impression for this person, right? So you need to do an icebreaker to make him impress. No, I wouldn't say impress, but get to know about me, right? Right? Okay, so he gets to know more about you in some way that you do your icebreaker speech. It's not just about yourself. You can actually let them know about your speaking skills. You can let them know about more about a bit of background because that builds connection, that builds trust. Don't worry about making mistakes for icebreaker. You are meant to make mistakes in icebreaking, okay? Because if you do not make the mistake, how do you even break the ice? Right? You need to really make that rich. You need to really think about what you can learn and improve from that speech itself. You never try, you never know, you never know, you never do, and you never do, you will never keep growing. That's my sentence for it. Now, finally, we have Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Now, Crystal is a, a new member who have just joined one to two weeks. Uh, please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, she hasn't tried her pathways yet, but do you feel slightly more confident to try it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very good for me to learn quite a lot from uh, all of you. And uh, now I'm having more confident on having my sp first speech about the ice speaking. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, though. So give a round of applause for everyone for staying behind for at least two hours, or originally just one hour. Now we expanded to two hours. We want to give the best to every one of you here. Now, now make uh, the next meeting, just uh, the next workshop, uh, just for everyone to note is next Saturday, same time, eight to nine, hopefully not over time this time, but we will be focusing on different projects as well. Please check our agenda list. And if you're interested to be a panelist, please let us know. The conditional requirements for uh, being part of it is that you have to have done that project. Okay, you have to have done that project. You'll be resulted to screening by me personally. I'll be actually previewing your sharings to, to ensure the high quality standard that we are delivering to the world. Because this is not just a division project, it's actually a global incentive as well. Okay, we want to outreach to everyone to know more about different things related to our Pathways projects. Okay, so if you want to be part of uh, a panelist, it's still fine. Uh, what I mentioned just now is related to demo speech. Just now I've just did a demonstration. If I do a very poor demonstration, that it will actually not let people want to try at all. So that's why we have to screen. That's the reason why. Yes. Okay, so all in all, great job for everyone. Thank you for staying behind, although we have a small crowd. But don't worry, let's take a screenshot to show that you are here, you are staying with us. And I'll make I'll mark this workshop in completion. Now, everyone, please switch on your webcam so that we can take a snapshot. I'll put it in our group. I know Erica is still using her phone for game, no, for chatting, sorry, not, not games. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, so one, two, and three. Okay, got it. And I'll be posting it in the WhatsApp group and the WeChat group. So thank you for staying behind. I will stop the recording now and feel free to ask.